I'm Dr. Ankit Chauhan from Udaipur. The topic for my talk today is management of infected non-unions of distal femur fracture with ELISA of technique. Uh, distal femur fractures and its infected non-unions, they present some uh, peculiarities owing to their anatomical locations. Uh, these fractures, they are usually associated with high velocity trauma. So they are very commonly open fractures and associated with other soft tissue injuries, uh, other bone fractures and systemic uh, uh, trauma. Uh, in these fractures, the distal fragment is already small and uh, it's compounded by intraarticular extension in both uh, one or both planes. Uh, the patient with infected non-unions has already undergone multiple uh, surgeries uh, leading to uh, scarring of the soft tissue around the fracture. And the frame-rated inconvenience are more uh, pronounced or prominent in uh, female uh, non-unions as compared to tibia non-unions. Uh, through my talk today, I want to discuss upon a few specific points uh, which are to discuss about two different techniques of bone transport and lengthening to talk about how stage reconstruction uh, can be used in complicated uh, non-union and uh, difficult non-union cases to share with uh, all of you some tips which I've learned from my experience and to give an idea about what time durations and function outcome can be uh, expected in such cases. To begin with, I'll share two cases. Uh, both of uh, these have almost uh, similar history, similar uh, radiological uh, presentation and they were uh, uh, both operated by ELISA technique, but uh, with a different method. One was bone transport and other was lengthening. So case one was a 40 year male. Uh, he had a RTA two years before a presentation. It was epsilated distal femur and tibia sharp fracture, primary managed by uh, distal femur uh, plating and interlocked tibia nail. The femur plate got infected and the patient had already had multiple debridements. So this was the extra picture on presentation. Uh, the femur implant was uh, present in C2, uh, multiple uh, loose bone fragments. There was a, a puckered sinus over the lateral aspect of the thigh, which was uh, discharging pus. The tibia fracture had uh, erited. This was a soft tissue condition, multiple scars, and a discharging sinus. The pre op CT showed a, a obvious non union with multiple sequestrate. So uh, I Planned it in a stage manner. The first surgery was uh, just debridement and implant removal. The debridement here was very extensive. Uh, all the loose bone fragments uh, were removed. Also, the avascular uh, bone fragments uh, were excised from the pro proximal shaft, and uh, large chunks of bones from the anterior femur condyle were also removed. Uh, sample was taken for person culture the sensitivity. In the stage two, uh, laser fixation was done. It was a across knee frame. And the acute uh, docking of around 10 centimeter was done. Uh, this was done in view of a pliable soft tissue uh, condition. And uh, on checking on table, there was no neurovascular compromise. So acute shortening was acceptable by uh, the soft tissues. The frame consisted of uh, uh, three rings in the femur uh, and uh, arch proximally and a distal tibia ring, which was attached over the nail. Uh, I would like to point out on a couple of uh, uh, points here. First is the location of osteotomy, which you can see is a diaphyseal as compared to a classical metaphyseal osteotomy. This was done to accommodate uh, uh, three or four pins proximal to the osteotomy because I was expecting a very long duration of extended time and a deliberate overriding uh, of fracture in the lateral view instead of aiming for a cortical continuity. This is done to increase the contact area to increase the internal stability. This is how the bone lengthening progressed over time. Over uh, 100 days of distraction, around 8 cm of lengthening was done. In the seventh month, the uh, tibial frame was removed and uh, knee mobilization was started. Fixator was removed in the 10th month. And there was no mobility and patient was able to walk full weight wearing. After a couple of days, the, uh, the fracture site and the region rate was spanned with an internal fixation plate. This was done to allow immediate weight bearing and to continue with knee mobilization. This is three months after the plate fixation. The fracture has uh, consolidated. There is a reasonably good amount of range of motion at the knee joint. This is three, uh, two and a half years after release of fixation. Uh, the patient is still short by three centimeters for which he uses a shoe raise, but he has resumed his uh, uh, previous occupation activities. He is able to sit on the floor and able to drive uh, for long distances. This is the same patient able to walk without support uh, with a shoe raise on the right side. 
the second case it has uh, he also had a similar history uh, rt two year back uh, and a floating knee kind of injury operated with distal femur plating and cc screws and interlock uh, nail and tibia this was the first x ray uh, just after the fracture uh, trauma and this was uh, two years down the line after having gone multiple debridements external fixators uh, implant fixation and implant removal so again uh, i went with a two stage procedure first was debridement and removal of all the avascular bone fragments and uh, implants in stage 2 uh, across knee a frame was applied but what was different from the first case was this was a bone transport frame the fracture gap, uh, gap was maintained it was not a dog uh, the reason being because uh, this uh, patient had fibrotic soft tissue around the knee joint which which would not allow acute docking of uh, uh, this much gap so bone lengthening uh, frame was applied and uh, uh, one thing i would like to point here is the use of this oblique wires which can be used in uh, uh, places where the bone stock is lower bone is osteoporotic so this kind of uh, oblique uh, shan screws they give a very good hold in such cases this is the immediate post op uh, uh, picture showing the frame for a, a bone transport and the uh, proximal tibia ring was applied over the nail i would also like to point out the use of uh, this kind of sponges when dealing with uh, uh, skin defects uh, this kind of skin defects they can be packed with sponges which allows for uh, healthy granulation to form and it can be used in cases where uh, one cannot do a, a, a flap or a skin grafting etc uh, with regular dressing this bone deep uh, wound it healed and formed a uh, healed by second intention another issue when we are dealing with a large gap non unions or when we have created a large gap after debridement is to get accurate alignment in both planes because the field of vision which is offered on table by the cm is very limited so this is sometimes uh, inevitable so but this can be managed uh, later on uh, as you can see the uh, mechanical axis of the proximal fragment is not in line with the distal fragment so this is not going to be uh, going to be in contact when the transport is complete so this was after 6 months when the transport was complete there was a mismatch but uh, the you can see a good shadow of the regenerate after 7 months the bone has consolidated at this time the third uh, third procedure was done which was uh, to correct the alignment to do a bone grafting at this time the frame assembly was changed from a transport frame to a, a lengthening kind of frame where the different sets of rods were creating uh, different rings so in ap and lateral view views the alignment was corrected this is how the frame changed over time this was just after the surgery this is uh, after completion of bone transport and this is uh, at the time of docking and bone grafting in the lateral view also you can see some uh, amount of flexion was given to correct the alignment this is 13 month post op which is showing a healed fracture at this time the uh, frame was removed and a gt cast was given for four weeks after which the patient uh, was using a hk for for six months uh, i did not do a plate fixation here because this patient had a, a long history of uh, infection around this uh, distal femur site and also the uh, fi uh, fibers and uh, also the fibrotic scar on the lateral aspect of the distal femur this is 3 years after elisarol removal the uh, bone and uh, region that have consolidated well there is shortening around 4 cm for which the patient is using a shoe raise he is able to resume his uh, previous occupational activity and this is the gait of the patient 3 years after elisarol removal so to highlight uh, these two techniques uh, here is a video showing uh, these two techniques separately first video is of a bone docking and lengthening frame so different sets of rod as are connecting the uh, rings and lengthening and docking is going on separately but on the right hand side which is a bone transport frame single set of rod is uh, bridging across the gap and the rate of distraction of osteotomy is equal to rate of compression at the uh, non union side so this is how the uh, frame uh, assembly varies of, uh, in these two uh, methods in uh, docking lengthening Uh, there are different sets of rods between all the rings 
but in uh, bone transfer a single set of uh, rods is connecting all the rings uh, lengthening acute docking and lengthening uh, offers some advantages that is the uh, fracture alignment is achieved on table there is early initiation of uh, union process more time is given for the fracture to consolidate it under the frame there is uh, less issues with uh, soft tissue invagination and lesser probability of needing a second procedure like bone grafting and soft tissue clearance but uh, acute docking is also a risky procedure to do it can be to neurovascular compromise the wound is uh, being closed in the tension so there is a risk of wound dehiscence uh, there from uh, you you will be using multiple sets of rods and connection elements in the frame so it's uh, sometimes it's difficult to find a safe uh, passage for your wires and screws and acute docking of a large degree can lead to pseudo paralysis of muscles and uh, edema so you have to plan accordingly with the larger ring size some points you need to uh, uh, check out when you are uh, planning to do a uh, acute docking is that the soft tissue envelope should be good and healthy and it should be pliable skin uh, use a curved incision instead of linear incision when going for a, a sh uh, shortening always keep a few centimeter of the rods extra uh, across the compression side so if there is any compromise or pain the distraction side can be uh, elongated acutely in a ward itself check for unexplained or neurologic pain or distal uh, blood flow and sensory motor examination and uh, you'll have to monitor this wound uh, for a longer time for healing third case is uh, a very similar presentation in 30 year male polytrauma this is uh, uh, six weeks down the line uh, at the time of presentation the tibia fracture was healing but there was uh, infection of uh, a large piece of uh, femur and the patient had ne uh, neglected central fracture acetabulum and you can see the uh, thigh swelling up uh, pointing out its cellulitis of the thigh again same a similar procedure was done uh, here i have used stimulan i would uh, again point out this uh, use of crossed a wires in this small piece of uh, uh, femur condyle there are just three wires but two of them are crossed uh, in fashion so this wire hold good for around one year and this is one technique which can be used when we are dealing with small uh, fragments of bone this is three years down the line everything was done as similar to the previous cases this is how the patient is walking three years after etc removal for the for the next case uh, is uh, i've copied from uh, presentations of dr mangal parya sir the history is very similar to uh, the previous cases a distal femur fracture with infection previous implant has been removed this is how the patient presented and on for looking at this history and at this uh, x-ray picture i think that uh, we can argue at multiple options like going for a debridement and shortening whether to fix it with pintle fixation or relizar or lrs what was done with him uh, at uh, uh, clr was a debridement stimulant insertion and uh, a canal fixation during the nail insertion one uh, technique which uh, was used was telescopic of the fragments uh, in which the, there was deliberate overwriting of the cortices this is to allow increase internal stability and allow uh, larger bone contact this is immediate post op x rays and uh, because this is not a very stable construct just a canal so to increase the stability uh, a walking uh, cast was given and uh, this telescoping uh, of uh, fragments it also adds to the internal stability this is 5 months uh, during this 5 months a regular change of cast was done and patient was allowed full weight bearing on the cast the uh, fracture uh, is appearing to have united this is 20 months uh, yeah. after the initial surgery the, the fracture is united the infection is gone and the patient has uh, developed a reasonably uh, reasonably good amount of range of movement even after being in cast for around 5 months my uh, take home messages from this presentations are when dealing with infected non unions it is the principle which matter most uh, uh, more than the uh, type of fixation you choose when dealing with non unions uh, you will have to focus more on the stability sometimes you will have to compromise on the range of motion by going across uh, the joint and doing across joint fixations when uh, planning to do a long uh, lengthening the osteotomy position should be determined by the amount of stability in the frame that is required instead of going for a classical bifacial uh, level of osteotomy as uh, can be seen from these cases bifacial osteotomy can also give good uh, strong regenerate in predictable duration of time 
these patients they are going to need multiple uh, procedures so we have to counsel the patient and plan accordingly uh, when assessing the outcomes in these cases i think the functional outcomes is what uh, matters more uh, than the x-ray pictures sometimes uh, limited range of motion at knee and some residual shortenings are the limitations of uh, management of these kind of fractures with elizaro uh, but i don't think they are they can be counted as failure of treatment it is all from my side i would like to thank uh, navi mumbai orthopedic association and ortho tv for this platform thank you